नमस्कार वेलकम टू एस पी स्वयं प्रभा लाइव सेशन डे फाइव टू ऑल द डिस्टिंग कोलीग्स हु आर अटेंडिंग दिस फ्रॉम वेरियस कॉलेजेस एंड यूनिवर्सिटीज ऑल ओवर द कंट्री एज यू आर अवेयर दैट दिस इज द एथ बैच ऑफ एन ई पी पी डी पी ट्रेनिंग ऑन एन ई पी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फॉर द फिफ्टीन लैक टीचर्स इग्नो हैज स्टार्टेड फ्यू मंथ्स बैक आई थिंक इन दिस प्रोसेस वी हैव ऑलरेडी कंप्लीटेड सेवन बैचेस एंड यूअर बैच इज एथ बैच आई थिंक दिस इज स्टार्टेड ऑन फिफ्थ डिसम्बर दिस विल बी कंक्लूडेड ऑन दर्टीन डिसम्बर एंड एज यू सेड एज यू आर अवेयर दैट एस पी लाइव सेशंस आर एवरी डे फॉर द फर्स्ट सिक्स डेज एस पी लाइव सेशंस आर ऑर्गनाइज आई थिंक लास्ट फोर सेशंस यू मस्ट हैव अटेंडेड एंड गॉट द बेनिफिट ऑफ दैट एंड टूडे इज द फिफ्थ सेशन टूडे इज द फिफ्थ डे एंड फिफ्थ सेशन ऑफ एस पी लाइव टूडे वी हैव अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फॉर डिस्कशन एंड दैट इज एन ई पी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी एंड वोकेशनल एजुकेशन i think uh, you must have seen the ngp document you must have seen the video programs available on swayam platform and you must have seen the last four days sp live sessions and you yourself must be interacting with various other colleagues uh, about the ngp 2020 which is focuses in apart from the various themes like uh, multidisciplinary education interdisciplinary and then uh, multiple entry multiple exit uh, digital support to the students uh, and we in and even a credit transfer and academic bank of credit <clears throat> along with that there are important issue is that vocational education and uh, skills i think that's where the challenge lies i think you can interact with any higher education expert in world in the nep 2020 they will talk about how to integrate the program how to transform your program uh, normal programs which we are conducting for the, all these years into multidisciplinary and with the help of uh, skill based actually unless i am aware of it skill uh, I, unless i have a basic idea how to incorporate the skill or vocational education in my curriculum it's not a easy task okay there are established disciplines it is easy like uh, uh, sociology and then uh, anthropology economics political science you know that how to integrate how to link together but when it comes to the vocational component and vocational skills and the skill based other areas unless you aware it what are the things we are going to incorporate and how to do that is a challenge i think that will be the focus for this today's session i think uh, we very uh, 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 selected this pro the particular topic after really brainstorming among the uh, my own colleagues who are organizing this program um, for this we have a very important uh, uh, speaker uh, my colleague uh, professor ashok gaba Uh, who is a specialist apart from various other specializations uh, at the moment he is concentrating and focusing on the uh, vocational education and skill components and he is in touch with various other agencies involved in the vocational education in this country particularly the higher education level so he is the right person to take up the session we requested him let me introduce uh, uh, professor uh, ashok uh, gaba for uh, all of you benefit of all of viewers and he is a professor of vocational education in the school of vocational uh, studies and uh, training vocational education and training uh, in the, at indira gandhi national open university he was the former director of the school twice he headed the school and of course he, in, at the moment he is a professor in the school but actively involved in various activities of the school i think uh, uh, quite a few programs are developed Whether it's starting from the certificate diploma level related to education, even a B.A. vocational education. Uh, uh, now at the moment they are involved in the M.Sc. programs uh, related to the information security M.Sc. M.A. in uh, uh, M.A. in what? entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship, which is again the skill is uh, figuring it. So that's why. So naturally his expertise is very important. Which is relevant to each one of you. I hope uh, uh, we requested him to take. I think uh, uh, Professor uh, Ashok Gava, apart from vocational education, and his core area is the uh, open and distance learning research. I think he has extensively did a research in vocational and distance learning, 
very rigorous research and published quite a few uh, articles and books in the area of uh, ODL system and various aspects, particularly the focus of cost and uh, economics point of view. So this is in brief, uh, I am introducing and then I request Professor Gaba to speak half an hour or 35 minutes uh, of his presentation, otherwise he has a long presentation, uh, but naturally keeping this time and give time to you to interact with him, I am requesting uh, to take a 30-35 minutes. I think friends, uh, uh, let me uh, welcome you all for this SP live session and uh, Professor Gaba will start, I request him to present uh, his presentation, after that we will have interactive session. I think uh, let me uh, uh, welcome him and the start presentation. Uh, let us uh, uh, wait for a few seconds to switch over to the presentation under the PowerPoint. Thank you, uh, Professor Murthy. Uh, I welcome all the uh, extreme my colleagues, those who are viewing this program across the country in different region. As uh, topic uh, for my discussion is given uh, New Education Policy 2020 and Vocational Education. So I will be uh, sharing my experiences for three perspectives. First, uh, our new education policy perspective, what is the requirement and what target fix for uh, vocational education in this particular policy and uh, what is uh, vocational pedagogy, how the academic role as a teacher role will be changing while implementation of new education policy at your respective institutions and third part is best practices what we have uh, done, uh, particularly in the field of vocational education, national and particularly our own uh, IGNO and our school of vocational education perspective, what we have uh, done recently on the basis of the new education policy concern. So if you see the target of uh, our new vocational education policy is uh, enrolled more than 50% students to vocational higher education by 2025. This is the target. If you see what we have at the moment, only 5% total workforce get vocational training. So it's require every stakeholders active participation to achieve this target of 50% exposure students to vocational in higher education. And if you see the policy further highlighted the beginning with vocational exposure at the early stages in middle and secondary school, that is already school education by CBSC and other state board of education already initiated and implemented this school vocational education but if you see the higher education context is require quality vocational education will be integrated smoothly into higher education. This is a huge task and uh, we all uh, those who are here to be play a very active role for achieving this target. But there is also some recommendation in the national education policy that is national higher education qualification framework will be formulated and it shall be synchronized with the national skill qualification framework to ease the integration of vocational education into higher education. It points out that higher education qualification leading to a degree diploma certificate should, shall be described by the national higher education qualification framework in terms of each learning outcomes. So it's a huge task. It is not the case at present what we are doing. At present we have a prescribed syllabus in our face-to-face -face teaching and we are covering that syllabus all academic courses, but when it will be implemented, then we have to scrutinize all the our syllabus and courses as per the National Skill Qualification Framework and National Higher Education Qualification Framework. But if you see the recently uh, development, the policy further uh, stated that we have to facilitate norms for issues such as credit transfer and equivalence through the National Higher Education Qualification Framework. We all know policy, I think all, uh, all stakeholders and all faculty must have gone all these policy documents. But this uh, target for vocational education in the context of alignment with the academic courses is a huge challenge before all of us. The policy stated that we have to mandate uh, relevant agencies to identify specific skills that students must acquire during their academic programs with the aim of preparing well-rounded learners with 21st century skills. We are preparing for this vocational education and skills integration of our curricula and syllabus for enhancing the employability among graduates, keeping in mind the requirement of industry and employer at 21st century skills. That is basically goal for this new education policy. Policy says ki we have to focus on education more holistic and effective by integration of general and vocational education 
as we are already doing choice based kit system of ugc you you have a some skill enhancement courses and some we have a employability and then language courses and this core specific courses here in vocational education we are not focusing only theory part at the end of the certificate and diploma or whatever degree awarded in this particular vocational streams the integration of the academic courses and as well as the vocational courses required to ensure the vertical and horizontal mobility of students and learners between academics and vocational streams this is a scenario of the policy requirement now what is vocational pedagogy we know all these academic courses face to face teaching and uh, we are teaching our all uh, core specific academic courses like economics history physics chemistry and so on but how is this vocational courses will be different teaching while we are taking academic courses that is vocational pedagogy vocational pedagogy is a field of knowledge oriented towards vocational trades occupation and professions there is a relationship between working life and the education system such that studies of work based activity in vocational education is very much needed now question is that you teachers ko abhi वोकेशनल जो कोर्सेज हैं इंटीग्रेट करना है जो वोकेशनल प्रोग्राम से रिलेटेड फॉर इंस्टेंस एक फिजिक्स का कोर्स है एक हिस्ट्री कोर्स है अभी प्रोफेसर मोहटी सर ने हाईलाइट किया है कि इंटर डिसिप्लिन या मल्टी डिसिप्लिन कोर्सेज नो सपोज एक कोर्स आप फिजिक्स के साथ एक बच्चा चूज करता है कि मुझे कारपेंट्री का कोर्स करना है सेकेंड और बच्चा कहता है कि मुझे स्टूड अभी फैशन डिजाइन का कोर्स करना है थर्ड कोर्स बच्चा कहता है मुझे इन्फॉर्मेशन सिक्योरिटी या एंटरप्रनोर स्किल्स जो है गेन करनी है so keeping in mind the demand for that particular vocational streams it becomes difficult to implement all the respective colleges and university therefore this integrated or question bank any course you can do from this vocational programs on the mooc platforms swayam platforms and then career transfer will be then academic courses number one option this is my perspective and second your own institution can start your vocational program as per the ugc or nsqf guidelines what are these guidelines says but before that implementation of the vocational education you should must understand the vocational pedagogy what we are discussing just now you see vocational pedagogy is based on vocational skills in a workplace and societal context it is not only vocational programs what we are going to uh, design and we are going to offer as like textbook no it require real life situation based teaching learning process where hands on experiences or internship or project based activities where skills to be enhanced that is a major focus there is a need for skill gap analysis at workplace sport you are going to start uh, any particular vocational course it all depends upon the your all geographical area what type of skill require in this particular geography area where your college is located where students are coming but it is difficult all state governments or industry have done some skill gap analysis that reports available and where we can decide and ugc also identified some vocational trades where this program and courses can be implemented along with the academic courses then development of curriculum that is jacking approach is required while designing the particular program of vocational in alignment with the academic courses and experts workshop etc etc so real job experience to be given in internship during the internship or uh, apprenticeship whatever we students has been designed to get this particular vocational skill enhancement program this type of analysis can contribute to the specification of the curricula decided by the policy maker that is the basic point which we are going to discuss today in depth because what policy document says our new education policy then we have a new skill development policy 2015 then we have regulations accordingly you have to design the course what is the course the process identifying and appraising individuals level of function in relation to vocational training and job market industry says ki we are not getting graduates as per the requirement of the skill they require at their respective enterprises and their own institution but if we see the training institutions or education institutions saying ki we are covering all skills what type of Uh, skills required by the industry the huge gap between demand and supply of skill manpower in the economy industry says ki there is a shortage of particular skills and they said ki various report available which referred ki graduates have degree they have a theoretical knowledge but not practical skill they are not able to perform the skill what they have in their respective job performance so assessment option required in this 
particular curricula and delivering vocational education program it should be through open ended written assessment or performance task to portfolios that's why this vocational education curriculum and syllabus is different from the academic courses and it is uh, the responsibility of this particular vocational curriculum and that is academic skills you have to incorporate as a faculty when you are coordinating this vocational education program and vocational pedagogy you are going to implement in this particular institutions you should include academic skill general as speaking communication skills it skills then general workplace skills that is job specific skills what are the portfolio which has been given activity the project and the written scenario and these all skill to be linked with the curriculum and syllabus and there is a lot of uh, already existing different level of vocational program at the school level as by doing by ncert and the cbse evaluating in higher education most of these education institution like igno or skill development specified university and public sector and private sector have adopted different approaches and different models while adopting vocational pedagogy at their respective education institutions so vocational curriculum when you are going to design you have to raise the questions what are the aims and objective of curriculum which learning experiences meet these aims and objectives how can the extent to which these aims and objectives have been evaluated how can these learning experience be organized this four question to be raised by yourself while you are designing the curricula in this area of vocational discipline any vocational trade these four question kept in mind now coming to this approaches of to vet curriculum at to each educated educational process aimed learners target group you have to identify it before uh, adopting this vet curriculum approaches what goals and qualifications are to be achieved that is learning outcome after getting the certificate what learners will be able to perform a task when given to at their respective job place for instance if somebody has i uh, my my broken uh, this chashma uh, immediately i immediately visited to shop and a technician said ki one uh, aapka jo size mein handle hai wo theek kar diya hai dusra nahi ho pa raha hai to iska matlab ye hua ki uski skills puri tarah se 100% achieve nahi hui hai simple example main deta hu ki aap gaadi two wheeler chala rahe hain ya four wheeler chala rahe hain aapka raste mein puncture ho jata hai ab us road ke bypass mein side mein dekhiye ek mechanic baitha hai jo puncture laga raha hai uski kahin training nahi hai par uske paas skill hai wo specifically jo us puncture ko laga ke aapki scooter ko fit karke wheel ko aap drive kar lete hain so there is a two type of different approaches of vocational education required first those who have skill they require certification and second those who have skill but not fully evaluated so evaluation is not like because we are a faculty from academic courses and we are evaluating our term and paper assignments or giving students a b c d grade or numerical marking 50% 60% but there is a debate among the all vocational scholars we require 100% marks not 100% at least 90% 5 10% which then students not getting uh, this grading he should be experienced on the job and then get 100% so here in vocational we require 100% achievement of a task what we have given and not like academic courses and what contents are to be learned so theoretical theoretical courses and practical courses to be separated and more focus if you see and that is in vocational education coalition framework that is vqf vocational qualification framework and some countries skill qualification framework and we will we adopted the national skill qualification framework we will discuss in formal discussions so what teaching method and aids are to be used real life situation based learning and you have to give demonstrations project based and this is vocational pedagogy what we discussed just now how is the result to be tested we have already discussed this part these five questions to be raised now the characteristics of vocational curriculum focus on transferable skills vocational interest and workers characteristics and behaviors and academic abilities and potential this leads to learner style because learner style is also learning style different from learner to learner we know whether it is academic courses or either or vocational courses learners have some 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 learners have more interest in vocational courses less than in academic and there is also research says ki most of the learners have academic interest but less than in skill so this different uh, heterogeneous learners 
uh, background, we have to see learner's styles and work aptitudes and abilities as suitable employable alternative. Suppose one course he has done some particular course not able to perform and he should be ready to adopt the other employability skills and the available within this particular course program. We will demonstrate this experience here. Now coming to this particular course of the role of the vocational teacher or trainer, that is the most important part. First when you are involved, because it is a role require every teacher across every discipline, because new education policy is focusing on interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary. First you have to list a task in relation to each competency. Any program, any vocational curriculum which you are developing, you have to develop the competency and skill component. You have to design a format for presenting the breakdown of task into competencies. Break each task into comp uh, component of knowledge, skill and attitudes. You should identify social skills. What are the social skills required for the task and state each component in terms of measurable learning outcome. These are the basically uh, ex experience of uh, our vocational curriculum. Now what we are doing? What is the present scenario and best practices? in vocational education in general and school of vocational education IGNO, what we are doing. You see, uh, at present uh, national skill qualification framework and now there is one document where recently ministry uploaded that is national credit framework because vocational education, academic courses, then conventional teaching, then ODL, online teaching, different different uh, uh, credit framework were there. Now, the committee appointed by the uh, Ministry of Education, Government of India, come out the one document, they submitted their report, that is National Credit Framework Draft is there. Then who is evaluating and regulating authority for a vocational program? There is National Council for Vocational Education and Training. Earlier it was uh, National Skill Development Authority, at present National Council for Vocational Education and Training. Now see, National as New Education Policy 2020 referred ki there will be a national higher education qualification framework and there are two draft documents are there at present national credit framework and earlier national higher education qualification framework. These two drafts document clubbed into one that is called national credit framework which has been uh, uploaded by uh, university this ministry of education web page where they are inviting any suggestion and conversation for before implementation in this particular document. Now UGC and AICT other regulations, tomorrow it may be others. So these are the scenario at present regulatory framework whether academic or, or whether it is vocational edu higher education is concerned. Under this framework if we see what we have done, the functions of the NCVT is qualification approval and awarding bodies and assessment agency. What are the qualification? If you see national qualification framework document, there is a different level. 1, 2, 3 level and 4 level is being given to school education and earlier it was 5, 6, 7, 8 to higher education and 9, 10 is Rostar's degree and all that. But now national credit framework is there and they have reduced this level. So that What is that level we will discuss now and qualification approval required by, and, by the NCVET. Then there is awarding bodies who will certify it, who will assess. Sector skill council role is there. What are the sector skill council? This mechanism to understand if you, for detail you have to visit NCVT e web page or you have to see a mystery of skill development web page where detailed guidelines are there. But sector skill council at present we have 37 sector skill councils. What is the role of this sector skill council is to create occupational standards and qualification bodies to develop competency framework conduct train the trainer programs, conduct skill gap studies and assess the certify the training on the curriculum aligned to national occupational standard that is called NOS and dealt by them. Because each course, each task force they have developed these skill sets and for instance one program plumber is there or one program is entrepreneurship skills are there. If you have learned level 2 level, 3 level, so your job role will be defined by them. What you will do? Supervisor or technical assistant. If you have achieved more than 4 and 5 level of the skill or vocational certification, you will be appointed as assistant manager particular or particular vocational trade. So each NOS defined one key function in a job role. 
each NOS must be a coincide and readable document usually consisting of no more than 5 years 6 pages or some of only 1 or 2. In their assessment form, NOS describe function standards or performance of knowledge and understanding. For instance, if you visit NCVET webpage, the, you see they have appointed nodal officer of each sector skill councils, agriculture sector, retail sector, banking sector, banking and insurance, BSFI sectors and so on, ICT sectors. So what is their role? They have to identify the NOS, National Occupation Standard and there you are all syllabus and curricula will be aligned with this sector skill councils job role. Now coming to this particular role, what we are doing here? The government says ki government policy document, uh, if you see the Anwar report or other various document, the 37 sector skill council, 34 sector skills uh, you, uh, particular job open shooting is concerned, 128.2 million people required. The mostly construction sector, 32 million people required in construction sector. So this report is developed by NCDC and available on uh, Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship for a web page. You can download and see details which sectors required what type of uh, job. Highest is 32 million in construction sector and retail sector 10 million. But if you see the economy at present, Indian economy after COVID, our service sector contribution is in increasing. So the skill require more in service sector and in comparison to manufacturing sector and hardcore skills. If you see electronics and IT, ITES 6.9, if you see recently we have uh, reviewed some skill gap analysis uh, various reports of the national and uh, public sector and private sector and PwC reports and FIKI reports, very interesting result they are giving. And they are giving service sector skills also required, for instance furnitures and fitting, 5.3 million people require in India. They have given state wise. Uh, they have given district wise skill gap analysis that reports available in all NCVT and mysterious skill development documents. I have given references also in the uh, bottom of these slides. So these are the uh, requirement of 1.8 million people to be trained in these, these sectors. If 34 sectors report I am giving you, the, the highest top 6 sectors I have highlighted here, where one third million people to be required of this particular 1 to 8 million. Now 22 already being over. Now we have just 6 months. We, I, we have not achieved this uh, 28 million people so far. It may be various reasons. One of the reasons is there is a low perception. There is a low perception among the uh, public and the parents wants their kids to go uh, technical um, uh, B.Tech or medical or other uh, uh, academic courses other than vocational courses. General perception is very poor. Response is very poor. Two, second reason is we have not linked the employability uh, skills as per the need because we are offering vocational programs uh, this is my perceptions and uh, that that enhancement placement uh, is is uh, that particular sector is also missing the huge demand they said degree certificate is there because industry should have to come forward to give this skill training knowledge is to be given in my, this is my point of view knowledge is to be given academic uh, education institutions and skill to be given training given to be given by the industry because they they said ki they have they are not getting the skill manpower. Education institution doesn't have the skill labs and the, all the sectors and or, or lab, but their labs are there. Particular education institutions, if they have particular labs of the or any training vocational training infrastructure available, they can proceed. There is no harm. But if you want to achieve the target, it's require everybody participation, not only single institutions. Therefore, we, make, we cannot uh, achieve this target of 1 to 8 million concerns, whatever Mr. Report are saying. Now, if you see the national credit framework uh, document, the level now increased. Earlier it was 3, 4 point uh, of, of, uh, in higher education, now it is 4, 4.5. Degree level program, this is a draft document, it is not finalized, but I highlighted here for discussion because when you are going to start, uh, I think hopefully it will be finalized this week and uh, uh, any vocational curricula. So first year co uh, of your degree program will be certificate program if they have 40 credits, whether ODL system or conventional or online. So 40 credits if you complete, two semester of the degree you complete, you will be given certificate. And if you complete four semester or second year of your degree, it will be given diploma and you see UG degree or PG degree. And after three years, 
time you complete then degree will be awarded after fourth year four year degree then research and other vocational streams you can choose as per your uh, UGC or NC NSQF draft or national credit framework draft so these are the scenario at present latest under this scenario how to proceed further that is a that is a, a case because every day policy document change and guide regulating uh, guidelines change it's require huge infrastructure for vocational huge funding uh, required so challenges before us everybody those who want to uh, introduce vocational programs at their respective institutions and because the uh, if you see private sectors and public sectors vocational different models are being adopted some of the ngos are offering this vocational program where they have a well established industry they train and they place them and they give training them to other industry so different models are there but academic grassroots level courses is there my perception is ki we should offer service sector uh, vocational and uh, uh, skill training programs that will whether it is odl or online that will cause not only less cost but also placement perspective also uh, uh, we require to training in the sector so these three component uh, is required as per the three dimension of national credit framework that is academic learning and skill based program and experimental learning what document says the three component what we explained here is required for this particular vocational training and uh, now coming to this particular three component what we have done for instance uh, various scheme of the government of india are going on pradhan mantri koshal vikas yojana and pradhan mantri koshal kendra national skill development corporation which is the public private body which uh, identify the uh, body of national sector skill councils and uh, various project and various models uh, they are giving and offering program with the help of the private uh, partners they are assessing the skill component and there are various roles which you can go for further detail their respective web pages national council for vocational education training just highlight it and that is approved and uh, three component assessing awarding bodies then jan shikshan sansthan the national institute for entrepreneurship and small business development that is government body also offering the skill based vocational program and indian institute of entrepreneurship and director general of training djt where they are giving non workers and non formal worker training program in this way we have designed this particular course and uh, we are coming to our own institution what we are doing if you see uh, uh, present there is a deal for integrated training courses with apprenticeship are due to experimental growth and second we see the pradhan mantri yojana where iti's courses are been highlighted but if what we are doing our school of igno what we are doing you see school of vocational education training program we are offering program from certificate to a phd level we have a certificate from uh, program in communication it school any students from any institutions can register with this particular program certificate in fashion design and design that is also offering very well and uh, all sector although it is not aligned with the uh, as per the nsq of level 4 or 5 but we have uh, involved the industry and faculty while designing the curriculum as per the requirement of the uh, level 4 or 5 so advanced certificate information security diploma in bp of finance and you see our post graduate diploma in information security and pg diploma in financial sales management recently uh, last two three years back we have started this uh, degree program bachelor of arts vocational study micro small and medium enterprises most of the students have diploma certificate and uh, things but they are not having the entrepreneurship skills so we want to create a startups person more in our economy so that can not only help their economy but national economy as well so they can employ people others rather than they are giving a job by themselves they are searching so this focus of this particular program is there we have a post graduation and master level science program in information security and 33% of the total budget of any public sector private sector going these days information sector latest data or what been yesterday release we see ki threat of the cyber security information security is facing everywhere of the national security concern or public sector industry security is concern and there is also master of entrepreneurship program specialization training to trainer we design this particular program and we are also offering vocational education program phd that is uh, vocational education and training now how to we we have integrated the skill component you see this master of science information security program we included skill components security analytics and project management and incident response data science analytical skills soft skills and post uh, deep forensic cases because these cases are increasing day by day 
Now, how do you deliver? For instance, skill evaluation. We have included this particular fashion design program recently, and we are we adopted our blended thing, uh, approaches. What are the skills? Industry requires skill, creativity skill in fashion design program, communication skill, swing skills, visualization and sketching skills, entrepreneurship skill, and in-depth knowledge of fabric. We incorporated all these skills in our syllabus curriculum while delivering the program. We developed our own courses, self-learning material, distance learning and online uh, platform. And how it has been evaluated, you see these slides, this is online program evaluation going on, live session which we taken yesterday, where all students were present. They opened their camera, 20 students in each batch, and 30 students sometimes, and students number is high. They opened their cameras, we asked them to perform their task, at the end of the session, they were able to complete that task. In this way, we ratify the, uh, with the help of my expert colleagues in the particular uh, fashion design affiliate sectors, and their skill level evaluated, and all the self-learning material uploaded over the EGR and webpage, and it is also being one part that is pattern making, also being offered MOOC, that is SWAM platform. This is experimented with two, three years last year, which I have been uh, opportunity to coordinate this particular program. Now coming to this particular face-to-face uh, -face ev uh, evaluation, you see, uh, we have adopted blended approach. Regional center of our IGNO have uh, conducted the workshop. All the students are doing and performing this task after doing the practical. So we asked them to bring the raw materials. They were able to perform. This is the live pictures what we have uh, shown you. So these are the two uh, skills components programs which we have recently launched uh, in School of Vocational Education. This is a huge enrollment is coming up of this because of the employability and some students start their startups. During COVID, the program was launched and first student, he or she made it our this mask. And then she, in the next uh, training programs, she was able to make this all apparel sector designing in school. And this way, we completed this particular course. And you see on the sport evaluation, the student is there. And you see the yesterday uh, practical which we conducted school. Well, and on the sport, I took screenshots. I let, let me show through their programs. Which program? This is, is certificate in fashion design program, fashion. which I am coordinating. My colleague, uh, academic associate fashion design appointed, and she is helping me. So we design the content, skill, and audio component. On the sport evaluation done, camera out, and she performed. Okay. So in this way, we achieved these skill sets. And this is not required any uh, this particular course uh, center or industry expertise to see industry then evaluate whether she has skill or not by recruiting that is my model and this is one more student uh, she has completed her task in fashion design this, this is uh, i think a brief uh, what we are doing and what we yeah. have presented in our course of action